Welcome to Evening Prayer for Sunday the 20th of September. The service begins in the Book of Common Prayer on page 18. Please join us in reading together the words marked in bold. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dearly beloved, let us sit or kneel in silence and remember God's presence with us now. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done and there is no health in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Spare thou them, O God, which confess their faults. Restore thou them that are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life, to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. Grant, we beseech thee, merciful Lord, to thy faithful people, pardon and peace, that we may be cleansed from all our sins, and serve thee, with a quiet mind. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O Lord, open thou our lips, 
and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. The Psalm The first reading The book of Jonah, chapter 3, verse 10, to chapter 4, verse 11. When God saw that the people of Nineveh had turned from their evil ways, God changed his mind about the calamity that he'd said he would bring upon them, and he did not do it. But this was very displeasing to Jonah, and he became angry. He prayed to the Lord and said, O oh Lord, is not this what I said while I was still in my own country? That is why I fled to Tarshish at the beginning, for I knew that you are a gracious God and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and ready to relent from punishing. And now, O oh Lord, please take my life from me, for it is better for me to die than to live. And the Lord said, Is it right for you to be angry? Then Jonah went out of the city and sat down east of the city and made a booth for himself there. He sat under it in the shade, waiting to see what would become of the city. The Lord appointed a bush and made it come up over Jonah to give shade over his head to save him from his discomfort. So Jonah was very happy about the bush. But when dawn came up the next day, God appointed a worm that attacked the bush, so that it withered. When the sun rose, God prepared a sultry east wind, and the sun beat down on the head of Jonah, so that he was faint, and asked that he might die. He said, It is better for me to die than to live. But God said to Jonah, Is it right for you to be angry about the bush? And he said, Yes, angry enough to die. Then the Lord said, You are concerned about the bush, for which you did not labour and which you did not grow. It came into being in a night and perished in a night. And should, not, and should I not be concerned about Nineveh, that great city, in which there are more than a 120,000 people who do not know their right hand from their left, and also many animals. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. Glory be, be to, to the, the Father, Father and, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Saviour, for he hath regarded the loneliness of his handmaiden. For behold, from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed, for he that is mighty hath magnified me, and holy is his name. His mercy is on them that fear him throughout all generations. He hath showed strength with his arm. He hath scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He hath put down the mighty from their seat and hath exalted the humble and meek. He hath filled the hungry with good things and the rich he hath sent empty away. He, remembering his mercy, hath holpen his servant Israel, as he promised to our forefathers, Abraham and his seed for ever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The Scripture Reading the Gospel Reading Matthew's Gospel, Chapter 20, 
verses 1 to 16. For the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire labourers for his vineyard. After agreeing with the labourers for the usual daily wage, he sent them into his vineyard. When he went out about nine o'clock, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace, and he said to them, You also go to the vineyard, and I will pay you whatever is right. So they went. When he went out again, about noon and about three o'clock, he did the same, and about five o'clock he went out and found others standing around, and he said to them, Why are you standing here idle all day? They said to him, Because no one has hired us. He said to them, You also go into the vineyard. When evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his manager, Call the labourers and give them their pay, beginning with the last, then going to the first. When those hired about five o'clock came, each of them received the usual daily wage. Now when the first came, they thought they would receive more, but each of them also received the usual daily wage. And when they received it, they grumbled against the landowner, saying, These last worked only one hour, and you have made them equal to us, who have borne the burden of the day and the scorching heat. But he replied to one of them, Friend, I am doing you no wrong. You did not agree with me for the usual. Did you not agree with me for the usual daily wage? Take what belongs to you and go. I choose to give to this last the same as I give to you. Am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me? Or are you envious because I am generous? So the last will be first and the first will be last. Amen. Lord, now lettest thou thy servant depart in peace, according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, to be a light to lighten the Gentiles, and to be the glory of thy people Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us, and grant us thy salvation. O Lord, save the Queen, and mercifully hear us when we call upon thee. And you, thy ministers, with righteousness, and make thy chosen people joyful. O Lord, save thy people, 
and bless thine inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord. Because there is none other that fighteth for us, but only thou, O God. O God, make clean our hearts within us. And take not thy Holy Spirit from us. Amen. Amen. O God, from whom all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works do proceed, give unto thy servants that peace which the world cannot give. That both our hearts may be set to obey thy commandments, and also that by thee we, being defended from the fear of our enemies, may pass our time in rest and quietness through the merits of Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Amen. Lighten our darkness, we beseech thee, O Lord, and by thy great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. For the love of thy only Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. Today's reading continues along the theme of grace, of God's wonderful, undeserved generosity towards humankind. It's a love which goes beyond human rationale. In our first reading, we heard Jonah's complaints when he discovered that God is not going to punish the Ninevites as he had threatened. And in the gospel reading, we heard the vineyard workers' complaints. Both readings highlight a rather unpleasant discontent. It is fair to say our sense of fair play, hourly pay, is, an import, is important to us. But our rules are not God's rules. His justice, his mercy, goes way beyond our understanding. We really cannot comprehend the immensity of God's justice, for his grace is not centred on the notion of rights. It is about the best outcome for each individual, irrespective of their contribution or worthiness. God's grace is a gift of love. It is completely unlike human love, for God sees the best in us, his imperfect people. And I suppose we all acknowledge that in some way or another, we are imperfect. We fear that we wouldn't be selected to work in the vineyard there are so many other folk who are bigger, better and more able. But that's not how God sees us. He calls us to the vineyard regardless. In his vineyard we are all welcome. As a child I spent a lot of time in Switzerland, in the wine-growing region along the shores of Lac Le Mans, where small, fam where small family owned vineyards produce red wine for home consumption. It wasn't at all commercial probably because the wine they produced was awful. Nevertheless, this wine was greatly prized by the families producing it. Now this wine was made in the traditional way, picked by hand and pressed by foot. And that was probably where the problem lay. For as a child, I stood and watched as men of all ages flung their muddy boots and crusty socks off as they clambered over the side of the vat to tread the grapes. They didn't stop to wash their feet first. Ugh. So it was no wonder that the wine wasn't very good. But unlike God's vineyard, all were not welcome here. There was a definite hierarchy. Only invited men were allowed to tread the grapes. Women and children stood on the sidelines and watched. And whilst it's good to see other people having fun, Standing on the sidelines being ex excluded isn't that much fun. In God's vineyard, though, we'd all be invited to tread the grapes. And no, I don't think we would be asked to wash our feet first, because in his eyes we are all spotless. For God sees the very best in each and every one of us. He forgives even before we ask for forgiveness. He doesn't give us what we deserve or what we've worked for. He gives us much, much more than we deserve. He sees our need and meets it. He begrudges us nothing. And that is gr the grace of our Heavenly Father. It's a Father's gift of love. Amen.
The peace of God, which passeth all understanding, keep our hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and in Jesus Christ our Lord. And the grace, grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all evermore. Amen. Here endeth the order of evening prayer.